what we've just enjoyed together is that uh, though the music changes maybe centuries ago or centuries to come, those words and those sentiments and those thoughts and all that we hear, the message in music like that, uh, music throughout all of our worship times uh, brings us together with Christians throughout the ages, doesn't it? What a wonderful thing to think that even back in the time of Paul, the Apostle Paul, Christians lifted up their hearts and worshiped just as we're worshiping here and God's Spirit was there. And, uh, in some sense, not all that much has changed about our coming together as Jesus followers and, and worshiping God. And even back then, there was a sense in which uh, the scriptures were read and shared. That's what we come to together now in our worship this morning. And in fact, we find ourselves looking at a portion of the scripture that is important to us, not only as scripture, but uh, these are some words from Paul, a great figure of faith, who's sharing something of uh, his salient points in life with uh, his successors. Isn't it always great to, to uh, stumble upon those uh, statements by folks who, who, who might be saying, uh, let me tell you in my experience, great folks, uh, what I've found life to be all about or faith to be all about. Uh, we, we kind of perk up and listen. And in a sense, that's what Paul is saying to Timothy. We saw last week a, a letter to Titus, a, a similar successor, a protege, one that he had mentored, and, and now Timothy. And he, he says, listen, of all the things I might say, it's a relatively brief exchange, here's some important things for you to know about the God we serve, or about how to live your faith, and in this instance, how you might put yourselves in God's hands in order to grow and deepen in your faith. Let's see what Paul tells Timothy in the first chapter of his first letter. He's told him about his calling as an apostle, how Timothy is a dear child in the faith, given a blessing, and now these are the very next words that he shares. I urge you, as I did when I was on my way to Macedonia, to remain in Ephesus, so that you may instruct certain people not to teach any different doctrine and not to occupy themselves with myths and endless genealogies that promote speculations rather than the divine training that is known by faith. But the aim of such instruction is love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. Some people have deviated from these and turn to meaningless talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they are making assertions. I bet you're like me as you travel about from place to place throughout the week. Maybe you listen to something uh, on the radio, uh, maybe a, a CD, and uh, maybe those words here and there spark other thoughts, and it's a, a cascade of thoughts from one thing to another. It happened to me this week as I was listening to the refrain of a song that was all about not missing the important things in life, not being caught up in all of the busyness, all of the things that we know have to happen, and missing some of the more important things, because as we all know, time moves so quickly, doesn't it? We turn around and here we are in the middle of the summer. It seems like just yesterday we were in this same place, gathered, doing this thing, and a week has gone by. And that happens on a regular basis, doesn't it? With a, a week, a month, uh, a year, and time moves by and life moves so fast. So this refrain said, don't miss your life. Don't miss your life. While you are busy and all of these things are happening, life is going on. But of course, the point was to embrace life and love, family, friends. 
lives, the things that we know are so much more important than, than other things that are always demanding our time. It reminded me of a, a prayer by John West. It was a very brief prayer. So my thoughts went to that prayer. And, and John Wesley, ever on the move, ever purposeful and, and efficient and effective, this was his, his life's prayer. He said, Lord, let me not be useless for Christ's sake. And he wasn't being profane, but literally, let me not be useless for Christ's sake. Let me be focused and given to the things that are important. <coughs> And that's really what Paul's most important words were to Timothy. What he says, if we went back and looked at it in more detail, is Timothy. There are a lot of things happening in the church that you have charge of, as with any group of people. But so much of it is going to distract you from what you should be focused on. And I want to share with you a few words, you might say to Timothy, to paraphrase, a, a few thoughts about how you can place yourself in God's hands that, that you might be transformed, that you might grow in your faith, that you might be focused on the most important thing in life. Because after all, in every possible way, don't we all want to be productive and not useless, but effective and certainly for God? Don't we all want to be pointed toward the things that matter most and we have a, a glimmer, a glimpse, a hunch of what those things are, but it, it's really easy to be distracted. And, and Paul knew that about Timothy, so he said, listen, there are folks that are speaking about things and they don't know what they're talking about. There are all kinds of distractions, all kinds of things that are going to grab you away from this thing that is most important. And he speaks about his training, training in faith. He said, I, I want you to think about your faith as a, a training ground, divine training, he says. And there are three key aspects of that, three key components. He says, Timothy, I want you to focus on these, having a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. That, he tells Timothy, is what's really important. You and I are like Timothy. What's really important is that you and I see our faith as a, a training, a transformation by God. And there are three important components by which we can place ourselves, place ourselves in God's kingdom. Have a good heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. 